morning, everyone. Thank you for joining um, today's webcast on Epicor ERP version 10. Today we have Craig Charlton, the Senior Vice President of Asia Pacific for Epicor Software, and Trami, who is the Solution Engineer for Epicor Software, who will walk you through um, what the new version is all about. So uh, without further ado, I'll just hand things over to Craig. Yes, good morning, everyone. Uh, great to have uh, so many people who have actually signed up to the event and, and also representing so many different countries through uh, Asia Pacific. So uh, welcome to you all. Uh, we're very excited about uh, the latest release, version 10 of our Epicor ERP flagship product. Um, what I thought I'd start with is just giving a little bit of a background in terms of the technology landscape that we find ourselves in because things have changed pretty dramatically over recent years and uh, Epicor ERP 10 is in response to a lot of these technology changes. So let's, let's just walk through those. Um, obviously we live in a world of change and, and ch change is the, probably the only constant that we face every day and the reality is that change is actually accelerating. So some of the big trends from a technology perspective, um, data is bigger. So you know we hear a lot about big data uh, and the way industry is responding to big data really sort of depends um, you know industry to industry. So if you look at retailers and anyone in, in, in a, um, a B2C type environment who are dealing with consumers, I think they've done a very, very good job of, of mapping how they can extract a, a larger share of our wallet in terms of spending. Uh, from a distribution perspective, you know there was lots of discussion. Uh, for many years about RFID tags and how that was going to transform business. I actually, I think to date that really hasn't delivered to the extent that we thought uh, we thought it would. Um, and from a manufacturing perspective, a lot of manufacturers now are taking advantage of uh, modern technology to have live um, interaction with their, their um, machines on the shop floor so their ERP systems are actually live integrated with, um, with everything that's happening in their uh, manufacturing environment. Lots of other uh, trends, everything's becoming far more mobile. And so the expectation of you know, probably anyone who's under 30 is that you know, every application that they need to access, they should be able to access on their smartphone uh, or their tablet or, or any other um, device at their disposal. Uh, there's an expectation that applications are becoming far more granular. So you know, it, the, the, the world that we live in is one where, uh, you know, any, as I said, once again, anyone who's under 30 and, and probably most of people who have a smartphone expect that if, if there's something they need to be able to do, they can download an application very easily and start consuming that immediately. Um, the me momentum behind the cloud is, is building. And so if you look at the number of uh, organisations that have already embraced the cloud, be it for end-to-end -end systems or even uh, point solutions, you know, it's dramatically increasing and obviously it's a, you know, it's a very compelling uh, story for, for companies who, uh, who want to build a new environment very quickly to actually deploy in the cloud. Um, there's been a huge social explosion and it's really changed the way that we interact uh, in our social lives. You know, everything from you know, uh, being with people and someone asks a question and being able to find an answer on Google within you know, a fraction of a second to being able to interact with a very, very broad and extended group of family and friends via Facebook, um, you know, versus uh, also being up to date in terms of uh, Twitter and, and deciding on what things and what people you actually want to follow and, and find out information about. I think within a business context, a lot of those concepts have huge applicability to businesses and I think this is going to be a new uh, big wave in terms of uh, business productivity as, as these tools, not in, the, in, in, a, in a social format, but in a business format, will really transform the way we go about our daily lives. Um, the barriers to usability are, are crumbling. Uh, and you know, once again, anyone who, who has a, um, a smartphone expects that they can download something and they don't need any training, they can just start using it straight away because it'll be intuitive, it'll be simple, and it will guide them through the process. Uh, you know, that obviously you contrast that with ERP where, you know, there's lots of training required and there are big steps that need to be made. Um, user expectations across the board have increased dramatically and so every user expects, you know, to be able to access, as I said, on, on any device, any time, uh, any application and to be able to find anything out um, very, very quickly. And the internet, which is, you know, obviously been around for a lot of years, but now that this new concept of the internet of things, 
every single device that we have in our lives pretty much can connect to the internet. And so if you extrapolate that into a business context, that all of the devices, be they you know, machines on the shop floor, vehicles in a fleet, etc., can be feeding information into your ERP system, which, uh, you know, as long as you can figure out um, how you're going to want to use that information, provides you with a, you know, potentially a dramatic um, productivity improvement as well. So if we contrast this changing world to the world of ERP, and this is a, a very interesting quote from Ventana Research from last year. In many respects, today's ERP systems are exactly what people don't want uh, anymore. And I think, you know, that's a big, a big statement. But the reality for, for most ERP providers is nearly every ERP application in the marketplace was written, you know, 20 years ago or, or even more. And so obviously, you know, a lot of the providers have done work in terms of how to modernise their applications. But fundamentally, their applications were built to last. They were built to enforce repetition. They were built to enforce compliance. And the reality for businesses is that they no longer want applications that are built to last. They want applications which are built to change. Now, if we, if we look at some practical examples of businesses that were built to last, a lot of businesses that were built to last haven't, is the reality. So, you know, one um, you know, massive brand named Kodak uh, probably uh, as, as well recognised um, uh, a, um, uh, a name as Coca-Cola probably. Uh, you know, they, they originated from back in the 1800s, obviously, you know, predominantly photography based. Uh, in the late 90s had a market cap of $28 billion and 140,000 employees. And then a mere 15 years later, in January 2012, they went bankrupt. Market cap of essentially junk. Um, they'd shed 123,000 employees in such a short space of time. So here was a company, a marquee label, a brand that everyone recognised that was built to last and they didn't. And in the same year, uh, a, a young company, five years old, they started in um, just back in 2007, uh, called Instagram, was acquired by Facebook for a billion dollars and they had 13 employees. So you have... The, the contrast of a company that was built to last that, that didn't embrace change versus a company that was all about change and all about you know adopting the new, and people look at that and say, well, yes, but but Kodak, um, the problem there was that you know that digital photography came out and it changed their world, but the reality is that Kodak invented digital photography, but what they what they did is they 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 didn't embrace that change to the extent that they cannibalise their own business and, and in fact they let others cannibalise their business. So I suppose the, the, the message is that in a similar way as, as businesses need to embrace change, uh, ERP applications have to be built to change because applications that were built to last are just not appropriate anymore. So what does that mean in, in a practical context? So I suppose one of the, the most important things is that businesses don't know what's coming tomorrow. Um, and so they can take two approaches. They can, they can try and can, um, to drive change and, and outplay their competitors, or they can sit still and, and, and just be reactive. But ERP, in, in either context, needs to be able to um, support flexibility, to be able to support change, and to be able to support um, innovation within a business. You need to be able to have business intelligence, which is not two weeks old and, and only reactive based on the um, IT department preparing something for you. It needs to be real time and it needs to be accessible uh, in a mobile environment. We need to be able to have customers choose how they want to deploy. So whether or not it's on-premise, whether it's in the cloud, whether it's entirely on-premise or entirely in the cloud, or whether or not they want to mix and match and have some of the business on-premise or some of their applications on premise and some of their applications or businesses in the cloud. So, so businesses need to make that decision rather than vendors enforce that. I think a really important one is, is this concept of leveraging crowd wisdom. So, you know, when I started work, there was, there was almost a, you know, a, a job for life mentality. And the, re, the, the reality now is that, um, you know, people who are joining the workforce, they're saying they're going to have somewhere between, you know, 10, 20, 30 jobs over their lifetime. And the amount that's invested in terms of individuals in, in the workplace, 
you lose that every single time people move on. So what you need to be able to do is ERP systems need to be able to capture crowd wisdom, both in terms of how do we do things so that we don't have you know, massive ramp up times in terms of training people, but also leveraging crowd wisdom in terms of enabling end users to drive innovation. Because it's not the corporate suite that, is in, that are the, um, the only people that can dictate how a business should evolve and become more productive and, and more competitive. It's the end users who are at the coalface that are, you know, really are the custodians of that sort of, that sort of um, innovative drive. And we should be embracing that. And, and the big thing that you know, we need to be doing uh, as, a, as an ERP provider is simplifying the user experience. Because you know, people don't expect that when I come into a business that I have to have you know, a week's worth of training before I can do the most base, basic things in an ERP system. So there is a real drive towards simplification. And with ERP systems being inherently very complex, the only way to do that is to embrace change. And we also have to make it easier to um, adopt the system and to upgrade our systems. And the other thing that we need to be doing is allowing our customers to move um, or to access the application on any device uh, at any time. So, so our answer to that is, is Epicor ERP 10. We built it on a, a technology platform which is 100% Microsoft. Our latest uh, version of our ICE Internet Component Environment version 3 with completely embedded applications, with an embedded social engine, with complete global capabilities to be able to support um, our customers wherever they want to do business, and then also now an integrated uh, e-commerce application um, for B2B and, and B2C e-commerce. And the five pillars that we've built Epicor 10 around are choice and flexibility, collaboration, responsiveness, simplicity, and mobility, and they tie back into those trends and, and how ERP needs to be changing and being more responsive. So we look at these individually, um, collaboration. So the, the concept of, of social is such that, as I said, we, we, we need to be able to keep the information that we, we collect, the interaction that we have between people within the business we need to be able to keep that in perpetuity so it's always accessible. Uh, and we also need the ERP system to essentially be able to contribute to a social conversation, and I'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. Uh, and also from an e-commerce perspective, the ability to have B2B, B2C e-commerce built on the Magento, Magento ecosystem, which is essentially the most adopted e-commerce um, engine in the world, right out of the box is something which, is, uh, which has been great in Epicor ERP 10. So in terms of the social enterprise, um, you know, many times I've been sitting at a, a dinner party and someone asks a question, everyone jumps on their, their mobile device and jumps on Google and finds the answer. The reality is that so many questions get asked in business and we do nothing about capturing the outcome. So it may be done on an email or in a meeting, whereas if we actually move to online and build that in through social, then any question that gets, up, gets asked, and maybe as simple as how do I do a purchase order for this particular vendor, you're capturing that information into your ERP system. So even as you have people who turn over and move jobs, that information is there in perpetuity. So it's like having wikis built into your system with a Google search engine. The other thing that, you know, the, the ability to follow someone on like a Twitter uh, feed or a Facebook feed, the ability to do that with ERP entities, I think, is, is, is crucial. So rather than having to, um, to uh, proactively go and find information, I may decide that I'm following a new part or a new product. It may be a new product that we're just launching. I want to see every order that comes through for that. I want to see every shipment that comes through for that. It may be a customer that's either a new customer and I want to make sure we're on our best behaviour, or it might be a customer that's coming up for renegotiation. It's a big contract. So I might choose to follow that customer and choose to follow everything about that customer. So I can see every order they put through, what our fill rates are, um, uh, you know, any, any issues in terms of back orders, any issues in terms of returns, any issues in terms of credit problems or, or, or help desk calls. So the ability to follow things within the ERP system I think is absolutely crucial in, in this modern day and age. And from a choice perspective, being able to choose how you want to deploy in the cloud, on-premise, 
and also having this exactly the same application deployed both on-premise and uh, in, in, in the cloud. And to be able to sw swat, uh, switch and change between the two, um, you may decide that you're setting up a new subsidiary in Southern America and, and you don't want to actually go through a full traditional implementation. You want to spin, spin up a new subsidiary very, very quickly in the cloud and then you know, essentially see if that subsidiary is going to work out before you make it a call on whether or not it's going to be on-premise or remain in the cloud forever. That sort of choice should be in, in the hands of the business. As well as obviously now that we're on a full Microsoft platform, it gives our customers a, a far wider ecosystem of people that they can tap on the shoulder. And, and typically they're far more readily available and, and far more cost effective to get your hands on, on very, very skilled um, people with the Microsoft infrastructure. In terms of responsiveness, now that we've 100% focused on the Microsoft platform, it's enabled us to really, really optimise the application so the performance is better than we've ever seen before, but it's also far more scalable so we can continue to move up marketing to much larger organisations uh, and, and leverage that Microsoft infrastructure. The ability to respond to change I think is, is you know, probably criteria number one for any modern ERP system and our ERP system, which I'll talk about as we go through, our ability to actually respond to change is enormous because you don't know what tomorrow brings and in fact you want to drive innovation to outplay your competitors. As well as having the ability to have an embedded um, NES system so that from the shop floor to the top floor everything is connected and, and interacting seamlessly. So in terms of the flexible uh, workflow, customers need to be the driver of change. So you know it might be a customer suggestion or an internal suggestion or a market demand or something that you've seen on the horizon. If you're not changing, then you know you, you risk being the next Kodak. And so what we've done within our system is to provide very, very flexible workflow that you can very easily tailor, but do so in such a way that you're not impacting your source code. So uh, an upgrade is very, very simple to take uh, on an ongoing basis. Very simple, very cheap to take, so everyone can remain current, even though your application has been tailored to make you as competitive, efficient, productive um, as possible. Enterprise search, this is the, the example that I was using before in terms of the ability to find anything within the business. We take it for granted in our personal lives. We should be able to do exactly the same thing, to be able to Google essentially um, or Bing our, um, our Epic or, uh, or our ERP database. And so we have this concept of enterprise search where you can type in you know, any name or any portion of a name and find out every single instance of that um, within your ERP database. Very empowering. Uh, in a more structured business intelligence environment, we have dashboards which are real-time, up-to-the-minute business intelligence engines which you can essentially set up uh, according to what your business actually requires. But not just in a traditional uh, on, um, uh, desktop sense, you can also make those available as you can see on the screen there, uh, on any smart device, on your mobile phone, on your tablet, etc. And you can also set them up so they can actually be updatable. So you can have a dashboard where you have parameters you may be out with a customer and you can actually update certain parameters and feed that back in into the ERP system. And so simplicity, the drive for simplicity. Every version that we come out with, you know, we have customer involvement in terms of how can we make the system simpler. And so we do a, a lot of work around simplifying end-to-end -end processes, around building lean concepts into the, the, the application at the core. But the reality is we also have to make it simple for customers to be able to eliminate complexities which aren't relevant for them. And so we do that by having these flexible workflows. The other thing that we're spending a lot of time on is because we do a lot of work in the cloud, one of the benefits of being in the cloud is you never really have to upgrade because essentially your cloud provider does that for you and then you turn the system back on again and, and you're up on the latest version. We want to as much as possible bring that concept to our on-premise customers. So even if you configure or customise the application, that we want to have the ability to upgrade very, very simply to keep all of our customers on the latest version. And we've made a you know, huge leap forward in terms of Epic Core ERP 10 with that. Um, we're obviously now, as I said, 100% aligned to the Microsoft stack, pure Microsoft, SQL Server, and .NET. So it's mainstream technology, um, it's you know, fast, 
scalable and, uh, and, and very, very easy and cheap to deploy. And in terms of mobility, so the reality for a lot of customers, and, and, and we see this trend that you know, data entry is the last resort. So data entry is costly, it's error prone, and it, it, you know, really in this day and age where everyone lives in a supply chain, where everyone's using ERP systems, we should be feeding information electronically. And what that enables us to do is move away from being tethered to a desktop or a notebook and to start looking at our device, be it a tablet or, or a smartphone, as the predominant device for interacting with the application. And, and obviously for going and doing queries, etc., they are a, a far smarter device to be able to you know, access ERP. Uh, as well as our ERP web client, because from a, a web perspective, you know, in the day and age, you know, post the iPad, everyone expects to be doing everything in a touchscreen environment. So our web client, albeit it replicates all of the functionality in the desktop client, it enables you to operate in a full, fully touch-enabled uh, environment. And we still have the you know, super-rich global uh, functionality, so you know, customers get to pick and choose which of the components they need to deploy now and, and which potentially they can they can leave to the future, but with all of the country specific functionality deployed, so we're there to do to support you wherever you want to do business. And at the heart of all of this, it's a service oriented architecture. So the entire business is built on services. And we expose those services to be able to empower the system to do a whole range of things. From master data management, so if you've got multiple plants, multiple um, companies, multiple countries, you can choose, choose which elements you want to enforce consistency and which elements you want to enable um, flexibility and discretion um, within, in, within each of the different business units. The updatable views and dashboards which feed from the services and enable you to, as I said, update. A service connector orchestration which enables you to connect to any other web service or any other external system, be it for um, a, an interface or to be able to call out and interrogate another system and bring information back as well as our business process management, which enables you to continually be on the journey for best practice, and so to be continually evolving and innovating and having the application suit your needs, like a, like, fits like a glove, essentially. Uh, and with a customization framework, which enables you to personalize, uh, customize and configure the application to meet your specific needs. And on that note, um, I'm going to pass across to uh, Trami, who's actually going to give you uh, a bit of a 20 minute look through, a uh, high level glimpse through Epicor ERP 10. Thanks, Trami. Thanks, Craig. Let me just share my desktop first. Okay, what I'd, li I'd like to start off with is having a look at um, Epicor ERP, the user interface. So as you can see on your screen, uh, it's received in a modern shell with very much a Windows 8 look and feel. And this is my home page um, where everything as you can see is very much touch enabled with the use of tiles and tile group, uh, groups. So it supports all your touch, touch gestures, um, very much being able to do swipe. I can zoom in um, and zoom out. Um, I can expand any of my um, tile groups to be able to access the individual tiles within it. I can obviously also move tiles around and even change the colour schemes if I don't like the one that Epicor comes with. Now if I was to access my menu, um, you'll see they're a very traditional looking menu structure. And one of the things that's been um, introduced is the ability for people to, who prefer, um, especially if they're on a tablet, to be able to view the menu structures in a tile or zoom format. So I have the ability to uh, go through that in a, a sort of a, a tile format. And that really comes down to your preference, but also uh, what device you're going to be accessing the application in, whether it's your desktop or through a mobile device. Now one of the great things about your home page is that as an individual user, you can personalise that to have all the key things that are important to you at your fingertips. Um, so things like your favourite shortcuts. Um, I have a number of uh, favourite groups there, which you can group in any particular way that you want. 
On the top left hand corner you'll also see uh, a list of recent forms. So the system maintains a history of all the forms that you've recently used. So it allows me to go to lunch, come back and very quickly launch the screens that I was using prior to going to lunch. But I can also have links to other epical forms or epical reports. It might be certain PDF documents or do important documents that I want quick access to. I can add that to my home page as well. Or it might be applications such as Word and Excel um, that I use frequently and I want easy access there. Or it could be um, websites, you know, URLs, uh, links to websites that I use frequently can also be attached there. As well as my dashboards. So with dashboards, you can have your dashboards presented um, on the screen or you can have links to those dashboards. In my example here, I have links to a number of dashboards, um, one of which might be my quote funnel. So as a salesperson, this is a dashboard, an example of a dashboard that I use on a regular basis. In here I can see a list of all the opportunities that are, might be in my pipeline and as I select a particular one I can actually see um, everything that I'm quoting on that opportunity and also importantly where it's at in terms of what task am, am I up to. So our dashboards can be KPI based dashboards, it can be operational type of dashboard but one of the key things is that it can be updatable. So while it's giving me this information, I know, for example, that this opportunity that I'm working um, on with custom, uh, Prospect Addison is actually going to move out. So my expected close date is going to move out all the way to the end of November. I have the ability to update that on my dashboard and in actual fact, I'm now very confident that we're going to win that particular opportunity. So I've changed my quote confidence and I can go ahead and save that from within the dashboard. So allowing me to make any updates that I want without having to go into the underlying uh, transaction screen. So it's not just the Epicor smart client that has received a facelift. Our Epicor web access has also received a facelift, um, making it much more touch enabled uh, and user friendly um, for those people who are accessing it from a mobile device. So Epicor um, Web Access is based on our Epicor Everywhere framework. It gives users the same functionality as if they were accessing their smart client, uh, but accessing it through a web browser. And it is very much browser agnostic, so whether you are an IE, um, a Mozilla, Chrome or Safari fan, you have access to the same functionalities. So here we can see um, the same sort of concepts are available within the web access. Uh, my favourites with all the various folders for different functions that I might use on a regular basis. But also if I was to access my main menu, I can see the option there for me to view that either in a traditional um, tree format or switch that into my tile and zoom view. Okay, so once again, depending on what device you're, ac you're accessing it from, it gives you that flexibility for navigation. Now, the, all the detail, maintenance and transaction screens also are touch enabled. So let me flick into my customer tracker, which is one of the screens uh, that I can access. And so my customer tracker here is looking at customer Addison and it's giving me a 360 degree view of that customer, whether it be quotes, orders, jobs, returns, uh, shipments, service calls, CRM calls all the way through to financial information about that customer. It's all available there. But you'll see there that uh, in terms of navigating, we've got icons throughout to be able to uh, very easily and quickly access the menus that I want. So I can go here and select you know, my change log or I might want to call up my attachments or I can go into actions and, and access the relevant menus. Navigating through the tabs at the top is also very easy with simple touch on the tab um, and I can certainly drill down on any of those uh, as I require, being able to view the information accordingly. Or I can navigate through my drop down there and perhaps this time I want to have a look at financial information relating to um, my particular customer here. So maybe the invoices for customer Addison. Okay. 
Now, in terms of searching, Epicor offers you uh, great user-friendly searching capabilities. You know, the ability to have user-defined quick searches, uh, right through to being able to search for menu items really quickly. But I must say that my favourite search option has to be Enterprise Search. And as part of the intro, um, Craig would have mentioned Enterprise Search being this sort of Google-like search capability that we have, but this time Googling your ERP system. So what it allows me to do is simply enter a keyword and the system will do the rest for me. Okay, so it might be that I'm a salesperson and I'm going to um, go out and meet my customer Addison. So what I really want to be able to do is search everything that I need to know about Addison. And I might be unfamiliar with Epicor, I may not access the system on a regular basis, so I'm not quite sure where to go. But Enterprise Search, by entering in Addison, I'm able to see all this information about this Addison customer, whether it relates to their shipments, it could be orders, invoices, um, items that they've purchased, and you can see all these tags there can guide me to the relevant part of uh, the system that I need to go to. So it might be that I just want to look at orders for Addison. So here I can see a listing of orders um, that they've placed and I can look them up. I can view that in a sort of a more of a classic grid view if I want to, um, or I can switch back into a more detailed format. But certainly if there's a particular, let's say, order that Addison is uh, uh, following up um, on, I can actually also enter those details. So it might be that it's, they're chasing up on their PO number 42471, for example. So being able to narrow that down and view the information. So I can see some of the order details. So what I would probably want to do is investigate that. And I can right click and launch, let's say, the customer, uh, sorry, the sales order tracker, which then gives me further information about that sales order 5016. Um, so any questions that they might have about the particular sales order, I'm able to view. So if I went to, let's say, the shipments tab, I can then see that that order has in fact been shipped. I've got, I've got details of when it was shipped and so forth. And if I wanted to, I could drill that all the way down to the shipment details uh, if I wanted to. So being able to now see that for that particular order, it has in fact, in fact been shipped via FedEx. And I've actually got a tracking number there to which I could actually launch the tracking details and view the status of that particular delivery. So you can see from Enterprise Search how easy it was for me to be able to look up information via a simple keyword, but also from there being able to right click and drill down all the way through to the underlying transactions. And of course, it's not just, uh, you know, customer IDs and quotes, it can be anything. So you could be even searching for, let's say, a um, part number. And it will also adhere to any wildcards as well. So I could be searching on anything to do with a product DCD uh, 300. If I entered the right DC, I'm sorry, clicking on all sources. So now I can see everything to do with that particular part, for example. The next tool that I'd like to walk through with you is our BPM or our Business Process Management Tool, which is our workflow tool. Um, it's one of my favourite tools. Uh, it, you know, it's such a powerful tool yet really easy to use. And the idea behind it is that it empowers you as an organisation to configure your own workflow rules and processes very easily. And the way that it works is that it's based on events conditions and actions. So BPM will monitor um, events and when those events meet certain conditions, it will then uh, perform a number of user-defined actions. And the best way for me to go through uh, that is to show you an example um, of how it might work. So let me take you through an example uh, to do relating to sales orders. And this, in, in this particular instance, it relates to sales order discounts. What you're seeing at the moment is a sales order entry screen where I have a sales order that I'm going to be placing for my customer Dalton. And at the moment it's $5,250, okay? Now I might be placing this order and Mr. Dalton is asking me for a discount. So 
I'm happy to give him a 5% discount. The system is very happy with that. But he, he, he might want a larger discount. So if I go ahead and put in a 15% discount, you can see how that's now highlighted in yellow to warn me that that's okay, but it's getting a little bit high. If I'm a little bit daring, which I'm going to be, and I offer him a discount, let's say, of 28%, um, which is above my 25% threshold, you can see how BPM now can pop up a message box saying, ah, I don't like this. Um, you know, this is not something that we normally um, allow. And what BPM can also do is pop up a data form requesting for further information. Okay, so in this case, I'm going to put a reason as to why I'd like to um, offer 28% discount to, to my um, customer at a Dalton in this case. So that's telling me that that particular order has been submitted for discount approval and it's put it on hold. So you can see that how BPM can kick in and really perform a number of actions based on your rules uh, within your business. So it's now been put on hold. It can't be shipped or processed any further until it's removed off hold by the manager. So if we flick over to our inbox um, here, and let me just refresh that, we can see how BPM has now sent an email out to jo James Bailey, the sales manager, letting him know that that particular order has um, a large discount which needs approval. So as a manager, he can receive that on his phone or wherever he might be, and he's got a couple of options there. So one of the links that you can see there at the bottom will actually allow him to go in through Epical Web Access and view that sales order details, okay? And he can read it and he can go through it, and if he wishes to uh, approve it, he can remove it off hold if he wants to. Alternatively, he could just simply reply to that email and let's say he approves it by putting in that word approved. He can just go ahead and send that email. Um, and what Epicor can do is it can monitor the mailbox in which uh, that email goes into. And depending on the keywords in there, whether it's approved or declined, it will act accordingly. So in this case, we send out an email to approve it we might need to give it a, a moment, um, but if we were to refresh that order that was on hold previously, you'll see how that has now been removed off hold because our 28% discount has in fact now been approved by James Bailey, the sales manager. Okay? So there's a number of options there and BPM is a great tool to be able to, to do those things. I did want to flick, quickly flick onto uh, the BPM designer screen to show you um, what it looks like. Um, so you can see, first of all, that it's very much graphically represented. So someone who looks into this workflow will understand what it's trying to do. Um, the other thing that it allows you to do is have multiple, what we call multiple exits with true and false. So in here you can see how if the order is less than $500, the email goes out to Scott for approval. But if it's above 500, but less than 5,000, it actually gets emailed to Penny Lane. And then if it's above 5,000, it then get, goes to James Bailey. So you can have multiple um, branching and routing and so forth based on your business rules. The other important thing about our BPM uh, tool is that there's no coding required. And that's important because it means someone like me, someone like you can actually do it. So it's really uh, selection from drop-down lists and clicking on the blue hyperlinks and being able to select options. So really easy to be able to do. So we saw the example there of using PPM to uh, send out email notifications. So that's one great way that managers and approvers are notified of exceptions and, and, and receive notifications. Another way that they could also receive alerts and notifications is via Epical Social. Okay. So I'd like to walk you through um, Epical Social in a bit more detail. So let me first of all flick over to um, James Bailey's social stream. Okay. So James Bailey is a sales manager and as a sales manager, he's going to want to be notified instantly of things like perhaps 
certain customers that are on credit hold or large order discounts as we saw before or perhaps you know new large orders new large quotes that have been entered in the system and he is able to receive those notifications instantly through his social stream and the beauty of that is not only does he receive the notification but that using the open with op option he can actually launch the screen to view the details so he's received notification that uh, the order um, is a large order and needs approval and by clicking on the link he can then launch that screen view the details and if required remove it off hold save the details and now it's approved okay so the open with option is fantastic it's like as if he was accessing it from within Epico itself but he could also reply to um, various people so the reply option there uh, allows him to uh, you know put responses through uh, with attachments uh, you know file attachments if he wishes to it could have also links to various parts of the system as well and the other thing he can do is also post messages so if he's got a question or a comment or something that he wants to be able to share with people he can certainly do that and it could be shared with his followers or it could be a, a social group that he belongs to, whether it's a, you know, a sales management group or so forth. So you can define a number of social groups to which people can belong, subscribe to those, and then receive notifications that relate to that group. So that's James Bailey's one. Um, but Epical Social is a great way to collaborate with your staff. Um, and I'm just going to flick into another social stream here for another user. Um, but yeah, it's a great collaboration tool um, and the beauty of it is that you can actually choose what you want to subscribe to, what you want to receive notifications about, not necessarily just getting bombarded with emails from left, right and centre, but you choose what you want to be notified of. So it could be a particular customer, following a particular customer on opportunity, a project that you're um, really um, into. Or in this case, um, a particular order number. So I'm following order 5463, and everything that relates to that order will automatically pop up into my view here. Or I could even follow Twitter feeds from certain people, certain organisations. Um, and so the screen can be tailored to display everything that's, that I'm following and everything that's important to me. So I just wanted to end off with Epical Social to, uh, to give you a feel of where we're heading. Um, but certainly um, we'll be happy to discuss with you uh, further anything that you've seen today. Thanks, Rami. Just to, uh, to finish off, let me just uh, share uh, my application. Okay, just bear with me for two seconds. Okay. Thanks, Charmaine. So that, that gave everyone sort of a brief glimpse of, uh, of Epicor 10. Um, I suppose I just wanted to summarise that, you know, what we've what we've spoken about is the changing nature of ERP and the the rapidly changing nature of the business communities that we that we all um, exist within. So the Epicor ERP 10 architecture. You know, in our view, delivers what companies need. Um, it delivers what companies need to be responsive and, and to to lead in this rapidly changing business environment. Uh, it's built for change, uh, with very very flexible workflows. It encourages businesses and and user communities to embrace innovation because we can always do things a little bit better, and the ERP system should support that innovation rather than limit it. We, we need to have the ERP system available on any device to be consumed any way the customer wants, either in cloud, uh, on the cloud, or on premise, or a combination of the two, and the ability to switch between with exactly the same application um, being deployed both ways. In terms of social, I think there is a huge opportunity here for businesses. The concept of having wikis within your um, ERP system so that it, all the information that resides in, in your user community gets stored in perpetuity. The, the ramp up time for new um, hires should be dramatically reduced and people are going to know that they can feel comfortable to go and find answers to things. 
as well as the ability via social to follow any element within the business and to collaborate with the, the broader community. And once again, all of that feedback is stored within your ERP system. The ability to go and search on any item within the application, as, uh, as Trami showed with Enterprise Search, and to, to, uh, to be able to do this on the desktop or, uh, or on any device. So, you know, we believe we've got something pretty special here with Epicore ERP 10, uh, built on a complete Microsoft stack with a, an ultra modern um, architecture, and, and we believe that's what companies need now. So on that note, uh, thank you all for attending. Uh, we have finished a little bit early, and, and if anyone does have any questions, um, we're happy to, uh, to take some questions. Um, we do not have any questions at this point, but if you guys have any, um, do feel free to email us at asiamarketing at epico.com. Um, a non-demand version would also be sent out, so you can actually share with your